Hey everybody, Doomwake here and welcome back to some Pioneer content on the channel as we approach the Regional Championship in Washington, D.C., which is coming up in a couple of days. I still don't know what the hell to play, but today's video is hopefully going to give, you know, a little bit of insight into my testing process and a deck that I've really been spending a lot of time on. Before we continue, as always, if you enjoy this type of content, please be sure to like the video, subscribe to the channel, it really does help out, and uh, most importantly, let me know in the comment section down below what you thought of the video. And if you are going to DC, what are you bringing? I want to hear what you guys are going to be playing. So, with all of that out of the way, let's take a look at Fear of Missing Out. Now, if you saw some of the early access testing that we were doing. I was playing a little bit with this red green fear of missing out deck. It was similar to this, but it was a little more mid rangey. It had elves, it had reckless storm seeker, Essica's chariot. It was more sort of like a gruel vehicles deck that just kind of had this small delirium package. And I quickly realized that it's, it was a little bit more difficult to achieve delirium when you're playing more permanent based stuff like elves, chariots, storm seekers, things of that nature. And I got to tell you, I have been playing a ton of various delirium decks over the past, you know, week, week and a half, two weeks. And I finally think we got maybe got it to a place where I really like it. Shout out to Brennan, my friend Brennan, who sent me this deck list on Twitter. He's like, you know, he was understood. He was watching the stream and realized all the struggles I was having, having with the Gruel Delirium deck. And he sent me a DM and it was just... Hey, I fixed your Gruel deck, and I think he might have. So let's kind of talk about what changed and, and why this deck is so much different than previous versions. So first and foremost, it's a lot lower curve. The the mana curve, the overall mana curve is much lower. And instead of playing things like Say Its Name or Cash Grab as ways to set up Delirium, it's utilizing one mana cards, one mana enablers, Patchwork Beastie and Seed of Hope. Patchwork Beastie, mills a card of return. Seed of Hope, one mana, mill two cards, get a permanent back. And it's important to have your enablers cost one and your payoffs cost two because that makes your curve much smoother. You can play one of your enablers on turn one, one of your payoffs on turn two, and that natural curve just works out. You can even in some situations, which you know happens a decent amount of the time, you can go turn one Patchwork Beastie. If you mill a card that has two types, whether either it's an, another copy of itself, a Fear of Missing Out, or a Wildfire, all of those have two types for Delirium, which is another important part of this. So if you mill one of those, and then turn two, you cast Seed of Hope. Seed of Hope is already the third type. So you only need to hit the fourth type off of one of the two cards off Seed of Hope. And then you can attack with a Patchwork Beastie on turn two. Which, you know, that is pretty good. Because the issue with this card is not being able to attack or block. And it is kind of awkward when you go turn one beastie, turn two inti. Like, you're kind of just staring at your opponent. But the payoff, or like the upside is that beastie does enable a lot of your more aggressive starts. And it is two types for delirium. Now, as far as the two mana payoffs are concerned, fear of missing out, probably one of the best ones. 2-3 ETB, draw a card, discard. If you have delirium, you get an additional combat phase. Uh, and then Wildfire, Wicker Folk, which is, you know, 3-2, and then it's a 4-3 Trample Haste for 2 mana if you have Delirium. Another good payoff. Another important card here is Breakout, because as you notice, it's our only sorcery. So it's important because it is a sorcery, but it kind of also acts as a creature where you can look at the top six, you get to find a payoff among the top six, put that into play, and give it haste. If it's Fear of Missing Out, Fear of Missing Out with haste, pretty pretty ridiculous, right? You can imagine some turns where you break out into Fear of Missing Out, maybe you have a Wildfire in play, you then give the Fear of Missing Out haste, attack for six, untap the Wildfire, second combat, attack for four more, that's 10 damage. And then the other card, the other payoff here that we are playing is Omnivorous Flytrap, which is very, very good if you have Delirium. It's three mana for a 2-4. When it enters the battlefield, you can distribute two counters, but it gets completely out of control if you get to six types which is a reason why we were playing a couple of battles here, just because I wanted a seventh type in my deck to try and hit six off of Flytrap a little bit with a, like a little bit more consistency. But when you get to six types, not only do you distribute two counters, but then you double the number of counters on those creatures, which, you know, like I said, gets really out of control, especially when combined with stuff like Inti. Because if you can make a really large Flytrap, see, for example, you have a Flytrap and an Inti, 
you attack with the flytrap. Maybe you put two on itself. That's two counters, but it gets doubled, which is four counters. And then the thing about Inti is you can actually stack the triggers to where you resolve the Inti trigger first, which gives it a plus one, plus one counter and trample, and then resolve the flytrap trigger. So it has a counter from the Inti, it gets two more from the flytrap, and then that's doubled to six. Uh, and then you can kind of see, especially, and then you can kind of see when you have a large creature with trample, that's a good combination. Um, as far as the, uh, you know, Inti itself, very good at, like I said, good with large creatures, giving trample. It discard cards, so it's sort of like a delirium enabler. Uh, it helps you dig towards your payoffs. Good card. Uh, Fable the Mirror Breaker. I don't think I need to say anything about this card. It's fantastic. It enables Delirium, copies Flytrap, really, really sick card. And then Invasion, not a great card, but it's the best battle slash Planeswalker that I could find because those are the only two types that we don't already have in the deck. And it's, I don't know, it's a way to smooth out your draw. It finds your payoffs. It's not the most embarrassing card, but I would like to find something a little bit better than this card. Mana Mace, nothing too crazy. A bunch of lands. The one important thing is Channel Lands because... Lands in Pioneer, without because you don't have fetch lands, you don't have lands naturally in the graveyard like you would in a modern Delirium deck. So the chain of lands are a lot more high value in a deck like this, and you frequently will want to save them. And even so even so far as go out of your way to not play a land just so you can hold Besage or Soak Sun at hand to maybe get a chance to cycle it later if you don't already have a land in the graveyard. As far as the sideboard is concerned, that's where it, that's where the big issue comes. So I've been playing a ton of this deck, and a lot of the games I've been losing have been to sideboard cards like Rest in Peace, Unlicensed Hearse, Leyland of the Void, Graveyard Hate. Because your deck is doing something very powerful when it has Delirium. The problem is, when you don't have Delirium, your creatures don't really do anything. You have a 3 mana 2, 4, and no text, 1 mana 3, 3, can't attack or block, 2 mana 3, 2, 2 mana 2, 3. Your cards just don't really have text when they have Graveyard Hate. So that's why I'm choosing to play four copies of Haywire Might. I chose to go with Haywire Might over all the other options because it's a card you can find off of Breakout. So that's an important part there. Damping Sphere for Lotus, Hearse for Phoenix, and then two Red Cap Melee for the Mono Red or Rakdos Prowess decks, Volley for Phoenix and Spirits, and then one Hazard for Rakdos and various other grindy decks like that. I will say about Hazaret real quick, it's kind of awkward against Azorius Control because they have so many ways to exile between Sunfall, Farewell, Wandering Emperor, March, that I might try to find see if I can find something a little bit better for that matchup. Um, but yeah, Hazaret is really good against Rakdos, and I would probably bring it against Phoenix as well because they can't really kill it. Now, all of that said, again, as of the time of recording, I'm going to look at my phone. It is Wednesday, October 2nd. Uh, deck lists are due for this regional championship in two days. And as of right now, I'm still not 100% sure what I'm playing. I kind of, I want to play this deck because I've spent so much time tweaking and tuning and testing the numbers and, you know, still going to be doing that a little bit more on my stream today. But again, I have a little bit of hesitation because of how difficult the sideboard games are against Graveyard Hate. So yeah, there's a couple of other decks that I am considering. Rakdos Tree, Rakdos Transmogrify, maybe is it Phoenix, but... I really am a huge fan of this deck. I really like where it's at, and uh, I think you guys are going to enjoy today's video. So without further ado, I will see you back here in just a little bit for round number one. I just think it has a better matchup spread. Like, I don't feel, I don't feel completely, I, I don't feel like there's any deck with Rakdos midrange that I have no chance of beating. Even Enigmatic, you can still steal games against them with, like, Thoughtseize, 2-drop, Fable, four drop like you can you can and will steal games against enigmatic with Rakdos but with Phoenix it's just like my experience with Phoenix was my opponent cast a main deck high noon and I just don't know what I'm supposed to do about that I hate the transmogrify decks I tried it and it's just like I don't know they're not the worst I can't really explain what I don't like about transmogrify it's like a Rakdos deck that's much worse against Fatal Push. But I guess against against the decks that have a lot of like one against the decks that have a lot of one mana removal, you can just play a slower game, which, you know, that does happen from time to time. I'm gonna take this land. Because I would like to cast Fable at some point. Uh let's just go. I don't know what I want to discard yet, so I'm gonna play Inti. 
I'm also not sure if you play Transmogrify, are you supposed to play uh, Atraxa or Valkavoth? That I'm not sure on. Field of Ruin. Demir control spotted. I say you choose neither and play Doom Foretold. Eh, I don't know about that. That I am not 100% sure on. Let's go... What am I discarding? Probably Torch. So let's do this. Hit for four, then second main FOMO discard Torch. The big thing for me is that I think that the upside of Valkavoth against Phoenix is so much higher. Like, as far as the um, like the passive on Valkavoth, it is so hard for Phoenix to beat that, on top of the fact that they just have no chance of killing it. So it's unkillable, and the passive is insane against them. So I think if you're if you're specifically trying to metagame for Phoenix, I'm I'm fairly confident that Valkavoth is better in, in that matchup specifically. Maybe there are other matchups you'd rather have You'd rather have a Traxa, but I get, at least against Phoenix, I think I'd rather have Valgaboth. Right, that's the issue. Is Valg Valgaboth is much much worse against against Blue White because they don't care about the the uh, they don't care about the Ward trigger. They just cast their Sweeper or whatever. Yeah, yeah. It, they both do have Life Link, which is good. I think if they have Push, I'd rather. I don't know, that's close. If I target the FOMO, I can get in a guaranteed 4 damage regardless. Yeah, it's worse damage if they don't have Fatal... Or it's less damage if they don't have Fatal Push, but... I think if they do have Fatal Push, this is slightly better. Not sure. Synergy with Cheggy is a big upside. Do you find that Atraxa is just not good enough against Phoenix a lot of the time? Like you would trans like even if you can go through the hoops of resolving a transmogrify against Phoenix, which to be fair is difficult in its own right, uh, they like you put your Atraxa into play, you draw some cards, and then they just go like they have their big turn where they just go axe, impulse, cruise, hit you for like 10 or whatever. And you no longer have a creature in play, so you can't gain life the next turn. That was my big issue with the tracks against Phoenix. But maybe you have enough stuff early on where you can like keep them off kilter for a little bit, and that's like not as big of a concern. Transmogrified at Valgavoth against Caretaker's Talent. Yeah, that lineup is not great. Like, they just have so many tokens. Uh, let's take this, I think. Just make it a little awkward that I can't cast Gigantha this turn. You know what I could have done? I could have actually just put the FOMO into my hand, which maybe was a little bit better. I go put FOMO in hand, go land Gigantha, and then just cast this next turn. Might have been better. What do you think of a base black-red version of Delirium for Thoughtseize, Fatal Push, and Souls of the Lost? The green cards are very good at enabling Delirium, specifically Beastie and Seed of Hope. So I'm just not entirely sure. Like, if you if you were to play a Rakdos version... I'm not entirely sure what kind of enablers you would have. Like Soul sounds good, but the other thing the other thing that Green has is artifact creatures, specifically Beastie and Wildfire. And the most important thing about Delirium is that you want you want a high enough density of permanents that have two types. So you'd have to find artifact creatures either in black or other artifact creatures in red, which I don't know. You could play like Bomac Courier, maybe could be okay. Yeah, Overlord of the Belmer could be good. Supplier, maybe. Okay. 
So what other? Well, no, because you lose. No, you lose flytrap. You can't do that because flytrap is the best delirium payoff. I guess you could try to be Jund, but I'm not sure what the mana base would look like in three colors. But yeah, not playing flytrap is kind of crazy. That's like the entire reason to be delirium is flytrap. Yeah, scrap heap scrounger. That guy's not not terrible, especially if you have enough mill. Yeah, you would have to at least splash flytrap. You can't you can't play delirium without that card. Yeah, three color aggro deck that also needs to fill the graveyard. Like it seems it seems like a pipe dream, right? Can't imagine this is that's a good idea. Bro, meat hook for five. You got some big meat over there. I fold. I fold. How can you say, okay, when your opponent has one card in hand and it's Gigantha and you know it's Gigantha, how could you possibly say that Thoughtsy is a sus? They knew what my last card was. Right? Or no, no, no. The Gigantha was... I don't remember. I played the Gigantha that turn. I don't remember. What was my last card then? Oh, it was a FOMO. Yeah. I mean, they're at 11. It's probably fine. I didn't play a land that turn. It's probably fine. I will keep this, and I will put back... I want to keep all three lands. This is going to sound weird. I'm actually going to put back FOMO, because I think I would much rather cast Breakout on turn two. Let's go Beastie into Breakout into Flytrap. Land, sorcery. I guess we can't hit Delirium regardless this turn. I'm going to take second Beastie. I know I can't attack this turn, and maybe it's better to take Flytrap for later on, but this gets me closer to Delirium, which, if I take the Flytrap, I only have one Beastie, and I'm, like, pretty far away from Delirium. So I think that makes sense. How big is my monitor? I don't remember the size. I've had I've had these monitors forever. And to be honest with you, I, I don't remember the exact size. All right, they don't have a counterspell. They only have one mana, so they can't have a counterspell. <laughs> yeah, it's not the size of the monitor. It's how you use the monitor. I need, to, I need to get another monitor, though. I need a third. It's like kind of a pain in the ass to do it. I want to do it, too. Yeah, if we could just play more than four breakouts. Okay, let's go here. I may flip the battle this turn. Let's take this. I think I am going to flip the battle. So let's play hearse. Just because I want to have two threats. It's nice that if they have extinction event, we have an odd and an even. So if their Wrath is Extinction Event, they can't kill both. If they have Meat Hook, not even close to good enough. Uh, Path of Peril, I guess, could kill this, but... Thanks, Sidelancer. Get this out of here. So now we're in there at 12. We're on four card types, I think. Four, eight, nine, ten. I think I'm just going to go to Combat... I can save the Inti as a way to crew the hearse if they, if they have a Wrath next turn. Go one on each. They can't really afford to take ten, because they just die. Yeah, now they're just dead, because even if they have a Wrath, we can just kill them with the hearse next turn. So I don't think they really have any outs at this point. Mm -mm -mm. Your second monitor is a tablet. Yeah, probably probably pretty hard to stream when your second monitor is a tablet, I would, I would guess. Can we run some games at the RC? If I have time, I'm not getting there till late on Friday. 
Uh, I'm driving and we're not leaving until noon, which means it's, I think it's like a six hour drive. So I probably won't be in DC until six at, at the very, at very earliest six on Friday. And I don't know if we're going right to the event site. We'll have to see. Uh, okay. Hmm. So now we do this. I guess we can't kill them, right? Yeah. Three, four. Two, three, four, five. Well, hold on. Let me think about this. I can go cast Inti, use Inti to crew hearse. Uh, attack with both discard Gigantha counter on hearse, make it a 4 4 trample. And I can also counter us here. Yeah, that sounds good, I think. Should be good enough. I don't think I can kill them this turn. So hear me out, right? Five. Well, actually. It's mine. So they're going to be at five. I can go flytrap, split the counters, and then I can use the inti to put the counter on flytrap. So this would be seven power. This would be four power. They would chump the hearse here, and then they would put the Kalidus here. They gain three, go to five, and then seven minus four is three. They go back to two, so they, they stay at two, basically. I think that's the best way to do it. So let's go one, one, done. Discard Gigantha. Then we said counter here. All right, they're off it. Cool. Game three. Yikes. No lands, unfortunately. Okay, this hand's good. Signing your ass, Mose. If you insist, I will. I will sign your ass, Mose. I will definitely sign your ass. That's that's what you said. Those are the words that you said. All right. That's what you. That's what you suggested that I do. You want to counter it, Lufia? What do you want to do? Be scared. Be very afraid. Be very afraid, Lufia. You're taking the train down Thursday. How far is the? How long is the train ride for you, Oshman? Veto push. All right. Ain't no way they have a counter spell for this. Zero chance. How's this deck now? Don't ask. <laughs> I was so happy about it yesterday. And then, I don't know, man, just I've just been getting my I've been getting my ass handed to me for the past 48 hours. Well, I was excited about it on on Saturday, and then yesterday and today has been a lot worse in terms of testing. I was pretty happy about it, though. All right, we have a song request from Look Mom No Legs. A little clever girl is in the queue. Enchantment artifact creature. Sorcery. Okay. Hmm. We just go full ham. I mean, they obviously have a wrath, right? It's 17. I could, like, take Beastie, play this, hit them for 10. 
Well, what if I just take Beastie and don't play this? Just like hold this back. I don't hate it, right? I'm queued for DC. I'm going to do that. I'm going to take the Beastie and then just not play the other 3-2. Uh, take it a little bit slow. Because like they, they clearly have a Wrath in hand, right? I guess I could take the Inti and just not use it. Like, put the Inti in play, give it haste, hit for five, and just don't use it. Because I do want to keep both my cards. Okay. It's mildly annoying. Ugh. Interesting. Hmm... See, this is the spots where Fear of Missing Out is kind of awkward. Like, I don't want to cast it, because I don't want to discard either of my cards. I could just be mana efficient and play the Flytrap. Let's do that. Looks like kind of a weird turn, but... I don't want to discard the Flytrap to the Fear of Missing Out. So we can just play this, and then next turn we can probably play both of these. And this is like... It's enough pressure that they probably have to answer this by itself. You know, and they can't push it. I'm not saying that you should always be man efficient. There's definitely times where you don't want to be. If three cards in hand. Pretty sure we just split the counters. They could shark for five. So both of my attackers get past Shark, which is nice. Just going to take 10. Well, in that case, <laughs> I'm not casting a creature. Fuck that. In that case, I guess I'll put this in my hand. I'm not sure what that means, Ashiok. Okay, that, you can have that one. That resolves. I'm not sure, Don Mars. I've seen a lot of different variations. Giganta. Uh, the sand fucks. The sand does indeed do the fucking. <laughs> you think we're playing a mirror match? Can confirm, not a mirror match. Yeah, that's fair. And I, I, I've seen your list before, Mr. Rib. Ooh. The beastie. The day beastie. Can't attack or block yet. Just you wait, though. This beastie is going to grow up. I thought about that. I did think about rapid battery for a little bit. I know we had a, uh, a version that did have Rapid Battery, and I was uh, a big fan of it. Like, being able to give FOMO haste for one mana is kind of nice. And it's also two types, which is important for Delirium. The only thing is, when you're trying to get the six, specifically for Flytrap, it doesn't get you... Like, you have six other types, you know? So it doesn't get you, like... The battle is a seventh type that we don't already have, if that makes sense. I don't know what I'm doing this turn. Instant sorcery. If I break out into FOMO, I could get Delirium right now. Let's do that. Let's go high upside. I guess that gets me Delirium in this weird backdoor kind of way. I think... Uh, do I even want to discard? Maybe I don't want to discard here. It's like I'm basically just throwing away one of these for a counter. Which, I mean, it might be worth it. Because I, I probably don't have time to cast both of them. Or, maybe it's better to discard the Fable. Actually, I kind of like that. It's not guaranteed Delirium for next turn. But it's, like, pretty likely we have three types. We only need to hit the fourth, and we're milling three cards. So we can probably hit the fourth type. And that would let us go Seed of Hope, Wicker Folk, hit for, what, 11 next turn? 
And I think that the second wildfire is way more relevant, way more likely to be relevant than the the first fable because I don't want to cast fable next turn. I need to just kill them as quickly as possible. You don't think I'm the beat down here. The thing is, you can't. If you ever get into a position where you're trying to block against the Rakdos prowess deck, you've lost. Blocking is just not something you can do against this deck that has like monstrous rage, titan strength, prowess creatures. And we don't have removal to be able to kill their stuff. So if I'm not the aggressive deck, how am I like, what's my plan? You know, I think the only games that I win when I don't draw removal is racing them. That can change if you have flytrap, like flytrap can give you big enough creatures to block, but we don't have flytrap this game. What chat? What are you talking about right now? Why are you being weird? No, I haven't tried Jund yet. So we're dead. It appears we have deceased. Yeah. It appears we have deceased. Cool. Okay, so this one coming in. Uh, I really don't want to bring in Damping Sphere against them. So just the melees for the battles, I think that's fine. Light's bad, Hearst bad, Sphere bad. Yeah, that's fine. I don't know. They might they might bring in their own Hearses, so I could see bringing in Haywire Bites just in case they have Hearse, but yeah. What else does Mike kill besides Hearse, though? Yeah, I don't. I just don't think killing a roll token matters that much. Galarian Raya, thank you very much for the 10-month resub. Welcome back, Ryan. All right, I'm going to play first, and I'm going to win this game. I'm going to win this game. <sighs> Sand is kind of slow. <laughs> Must have all gifting a sub to Doom Souls. And here's say hey, thank you for the three months. Uh, so not only can you see inside of my soul, you can also gift subs to my soul. Should I be afraid? Does that mean that I've been docked? Yeah, if you want to see inside my soul... You have to you have to go through some ad breaks first. All right, Inti. Beast team Inti synergy. Chat, you guys are just a bunch of haters. Victus, thank you for the prime sub. Honestly, Mark Chalice, Soulscar Mage is just too slow for this deck. Like with what it's trying to accomplish, it's just too slow. XDD shrug. Uh, no blockers are to be declared. It's supposed to be Doom Feet. I mean, if it has the zeros instead of the O's, that has to be somebody just making a troll account. <laughs> I think it. Oh yeah, yeah. First September. I think it only. It only. Uh, Twitch only gives subs in the in in the form of in the form of five gifts. I think Jello Moose. Thank you for the prime. That twenty six month resub. Welcome back, Jello Moose. Are you the Jello or are you the Moose? Por qué no los dos? I guess I should attack first, right? Probably should have attacked before playing my land. Do a little bit of this and a little bit of that. Can confirm. Should have attacked before playing my land. Yeah, we're playing break in on this version. It should be in the Mox field. We've got to check out the deck list. This song does kind of have a good vibe to it. I like it. All right. I am minus one land. I should have one more land. They, they plotted Slick Shot, right? Yeah. Well, we're probably dead this turn, so... We are very, very likely deceased. Just two pump spells plus fling kills us, right? 
Surely that wouldn't matter. I kind of want to find a breakout next turn so I can go breakout FOMO. Okay, that means we're not dying this turn, which is good. I like not dying. JMC Fofo, what do you got for me? We got a little hype train going on, chap. Little little hype train. I wish that I could see the on-screen celebrations through Streamlabs, but it doesn't it doesn't pop up on Streamlabs for me. Yeah, delir so Delirium has not been difficult to achieve between the Beasties, the FOMOs, the Seed of Hopes, and the Fables. Like, Delirium is pretty easy. What's difficult is getting to six types for, um, for Flytrap. Because Flytrap is a good card on four types, but it is a broken card on six types. Take it all. I am blocking. The Scam Train music. Oh, okay. You know what? You want Scam Train music? All right. We haven't played this song in a while. I got you. I know what you're looking for. I know exactly what you are looking for, if I can find it. All right. You guys want Scam Train music? All right. Scam Train music. I'm at five... That is not a lot of life. It is still kind of loud, right? Do that. That's good. Uh, okay, damage. 3, 6, 7, 8, 9, 13, 15. So if I, if I break out into FOMO, they're dead. Let's see. I kind of want to do this first. With the Fable Trigger on the stack. Neither of those really help. So, let's go these two. Break out, break out, break out, break out. Any breakouts? Brother. Brother. <laughs> Wait, this thing still can't attack? What the fuck? Creature instant land. Okay. Well, uh, not great. Not great. Hmm. So I can go... What do I even hit? What do we even... What can I hit here? I don't even know. Red, three, four, five, six. I can get Delirium pre-combat, but I have to sack my Patchwork Beastie and then I can't attack with it, so it's like Kind of pointless. Yeah. Oh, I could, oh, I could have bargained the fable, I guess. It wasn't lethal though, right? It's only three, six. It's only nine damage. Yeah, but it's only nine damage. Wouldn't I rather just bargain the fable and then have this on defense? Isn't that just better? So we go here. I think that might be the plan. It's just bargain on defense. And then put the counter here. And do this. Another seed. Take six, go to nine. Yeah, we can also bargain the treasure now. I'm going to cast the Seed of Hope first, obviously. Dun, 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 dun. So, Chombi, if, you, if it's a resub... Uh, when you when you resub, it should pop up a little message in the chat, say like share my streak, and then if you if you check that little box, you could type a message in chat to to have like have it play the resub message on stream. Well, I hit delirium, but I wonder if it's <laughs> hmm. That's seven. All right, so how about this? How about we take the wildfire, play this, cast this, and pass. And then on defense, we can go, ah, see, the shitty thing about this is we have to torch before blocks. Right? Mm. This is awkward. I wanted, to, I wanted to block with the beastie before casting the torch, but in order for me to block with this, I have to torch first. So this might be a little awkward, right? 
So maybe it was... Nah, I mean, I still have to take the Wildfire because I need a second blocker. Because ideally I wanted to go kill the Slick Shot block block. Torch on my turn. Yeah, I could do that. I guess if I'm going to have to torch before blocks, it's probably better to just torch on my turn. Because I'm going to have to do it anyways, right? Okay. It's not ideal. The train has... Yeah, the train died and we also died. It's funny how the timing works on that, huh? Alright, bargain. You know... Yeah, I mean, I guess I have to, right? Just I'm I'm going to die this turn. 100% I'm going to die this turn. I don't think there's anything I can do that beats those two cards, though. Right? Unless I don't block with the beastie, and then I just go, like, block here, take the rest, and then whatever the first pump spell they cast, then I cast the torch. But just don't block with this. Maybe that maybe that beats more stuff. When I torch on your turn when they were tapped out. I wanted them to not know that I would have two blockers. Because maybe it makes them play differently. I'm not sure. I, I doubt it does, but. Okay. We have double Titan Strength. We also died of that. I feel like no matter what I do, there's just not... Oh. They did not have the second Titan Strength. Uh, Paid Actor? Okay. <laughs> did they not... Th oh, maybe they didn't... Maybe they thought that I wasn't um, bargaining it. They probably missed the bargain, right? Yeah. I still probably... I still could die, right? Did they target the wrong one? Maybe. Maybe they went to target this one. Oh, actually, if they targeted this one, I was dead, right? Because then I take six and then die to this. <laughs> now, to be fair, I might still be dead. Okay, okay. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> All right, El Jefe. Il jefe. I'm just, uh, I am I am a reformed pioneer gamer. I don't know if you know this, but Seed of Hope hits every time, by the way. Every single time it always hits. Except for the times where it doesn't hit, but that doesn't happen, so it, you know, it always hits. Well, if the first one didn't hit, the second one will. Just do this first. <laughs> Will it hit my Delver deck? Well, Delver deck has a lot less lands, doesn't it? It didn't even need to hit. All right, hit you for three. Tres. Tres. It might have actually been better to Seed of Hope there and try and set up Delirium for turn three. Not sure. It's kind of close. I hope they kill this. I, like, actively want this in my graveyard for two types. Oh, I'm in. 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 In, in, in. Ban out, man. Ban out, man. Ban out, man. Beat it. Beat it. Even though it's a sorcery, how bad is say it's name over seed? Uh, it's not the fact that it's a sorcery that makes it bad. The biggest difference is two versus one mana. And uh, like the reason that this deck is better than previous versions of Delirium that I've played is it's much more mana efficient. Like getting to play one mana enablers is huge. Like that that is the most important part is just being more mana efficient because decks in Pioneer are just so fast, you know? And they just don't give you the kind of time to like like on turn two you want to be casting you know you have, you have a lot of twos right so you want to be you want your enablers to be one mana that's why I prefer Beastie and Seed and then your two mana cards to be payoffs and that's like kind of how the curve works or I guess like Fear of Missing Out as well as another enabler but that was kind of the idea why is Flytrap good because it's just like 
it's three mana for ten power. <laughs> if you have six types, it's 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 hard to explain without actually just like seeing it in action. But when you have six types, it is a broken magic card. And it's like six types sounds like a lot, but it's actually like I have found it not to, to not be that that hard to achieve in this deck. Pick up Gigantha. Deal. All right. Give me a fourth type, please. That is a fourth type. And we drew a land. Hello. Hello. Uh, just make a five five, right? I think. It's worse against push. Eh, should I probably should have split there. This is bad against push. Although I think if they had push, they were supposed to push main phase. Not sure. Flytrap should have secret reach. It wouldn't be that much of a secret on arena. Just have that giant obnoxious born arrow. I hate that shit, by the way. What is this? Red? Oh, okay, sure. Wait, really? And you didn't kill the flytrap? I'm sorry, what? It's a good thing I didn't split, I guess, because if I split, they would have killed us 100%. Alright, my flytrap has plus one, plus zero in trample. That, that resolves. That, that does resolve. I feel like they have Edict. Yeah, okay. That's fine. Their last card's Giganta. I think we win this game. I should Seed of Hope first to try and spike Delirium. Or six types, rather. Five. Five is not six. Is it better to play Fable here? What am I missing? I have instant artifact creature land sorcery. I don't have enchantment, but if I play the Fable, then I can't put the Fable in the graveyard. It's probably just better to get this going, I think. Knowing their last card's Gigantha. I'm going to hold the land, too. Yeah, the trap also blocks the den better. That's a good point. Although I think they're more likely to play Gigantha this turn than just den me. Eh, if I play this... I don't know. If I play this, they're probably still not deading me right. Yeah, it can attack as a 6-8 next turn into the Gigantha. Yeah, Flytrap is just so messed up. Especially if we can hit the 6-type the this turn. Like, <laughs> you're, you're about to see what happens if we can hit the 6-type. It just gets out of control sometimes. Give me a FOMO. Oh, <laughs> don't mind if I do, huh? All right, I'm going to go to combat. I would like to enter the combat phase. So do we just dump everything in the fly trap? No, right? Four... Can I go one on each and still get this past Gigantha? No, it'd be a four or five, right? They're dead. Well, they're not dead. Because if I target, if I go both on Flytrap, untap Flytrap, they can eat the FOMO, take the first big hit, and then chump block the second big hit. So I think what it might be better to do is actually go here and here. I think I like this better. Because they still have to chump block with Giganta, but I get to keep the FOMO this way. This is way better, I think. Okay, they take 10. And then they have to chump block the second attack. <laughs> 10, 12, by the way. <laughs> 10, 12 coming in. Oh, <laughs> well, I guess they could also just not block. <laughs> This hand's not the most explosive, but I like having an opening hand torch against Gigantha. We go like turn one torch, turn two FOMO, turn three fable. It's a nice curve. 
<laughs> I can't torch that. Damn it. Interesting. I think that's higher upside, right? Um. Okay, maybe it's not higher upside. I kind of want to take the beastie just to get delirium going. Let's do that. It's obviously not as good as the uh, the NT, but do I know how many people are registered for the RC? Infinite. I'm going to tell you right now. I will check the melee page. I want to say at least 2,000. 1,786. <laughs> That's a lot. That's a lot. I'm sorry, what? <laughs> yeah. It was the, the biggest RC by a wide margin. Invite only event, by the way. I like it, Tron Dragon. I like it. Still needs a little bit of work, but I do like it. All right, Sorcery Land. All right, you want to see a professional play? You ready for this? Which one do we sack? I think it's actually kind of close, right? I guess keeping the FOMO is better with the flytrap next turn. Sorcery, land, enchantment, instant artifact creature. Yeah, if I keep the FOMO, we have six types next turn. All right, I'm going to keep the FOMO. But I want to kill it now before they get to play a spell. Uh, I don't really need that. I think I just want to find torches. But now we have six types. So we just get to go ballistic next turn. I can hit them for 12. Nah, Mercadia kind of sucks. I tried the the red green invasion. I can't remember the name. I think it's called Ergamon. Ergamon was okay. I didn't I didn't hate that card, but it was still a little medium. Yeah, I did try Ergamon for a little bit. I could have hit them for twelve there, but I think it's better to have a force like two four sixes. Tarkir is interesting because it's a removal spell, but it's not a very good removal spell is the problem. But it is interaction, which you are kind of missing, so I don't hate it. Um, I, I, I agree. This is probably the single weakest card in the deck, but I just don't know. I don't know exactly what I would want to play over it. Um, now, this card does do a couple of things. Like, obviously, it's a different type. It's a type that you don't already have. It finds you your more powerful cards like Flytrap and stuff like that. And it helps smooth out draws. In the backside, like the 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 the, the backside of this does come up quite a bit. Um, I tried Ergamon. I tried. I didn't try Domri Raid. I tried Domri Anarch of Bolas, which was kind of hit or missed. I didn't love that card a lot, but I tried a couple of different things in that spot. None of them felt super great though. Yeah, dude, I, this deck would kill for Rumble. I would play Rumble in a heartbeat in this deck. But yeah, the, the idea behind the, that those two slots were I wanted a card type that I didn't already have. So something that wasn't instant land artifact creature enchantment sorcery. I wanted a, either a planeswalker or a battle. And there just a, there isn't a lot of good planeswalkers or battles, is the problem. Playing against Lotus Field, you can kind of you can kind of just race them. Like this deck can kill pretty quickly. Especially against no interaction. Like if they're if they're not casting removal spells, if they're just letting you goldfish, this deck can goldfish pretty quickly. Mmm, beastie or wildfire? Sorcery instant. Sorcery instant. I think it's the beastie. Because I'm still a little ways away from Delirium. It's close, though. Could also go, like, Wildfire. Yeah, Wildfire maybe pressures them a little bit more. Yeah, the Lotus deck is actually, like, not... Lotus, the Lotus deck is much, fa is much slower than just the Rakdos Prowess deck. 
as far as the raw speed is concerned. So like I'm probably much more concerned with Prowess than I am Lotus because not only are they faster, but they're also interacting with you more frequently. Uh, this never misses, as I've said before. Well, it never misses except for when it misses is the problem. We did gain two life, though. I mean, it is and it isn't Snapcaster Sage. Like, it definitely has draws that, that are a week or two removal spells than others, but it also just has a ton of different... Like, it, it just... It can present a lot of different threats, like a lot of threats every single turn. Just keep endlessly. What is this? <laughs> Plus blade points, by the way. Uh, what was I gonna say? Like that deck can just keep presenting threats over and over again. So you would think it's maybe weaker to removal than it actually is, but it's it, it is pretty resilient. Okay, I want a removal spell. That's why I moved off Gruul was because of the type lacks. Lily in the main is enough, plus type as goal testing. But black gives you a lot too. I mean, I wouldn't necessarily consider playing black just for planeswalkers. Like you you can play shitty planeswalkers and that's fine. The only reason I would consider playing black is Thoughtseize Fatal Push. But none of the none of the other black cards really excite me that much. Alright, so we are on instant sorcery, artifact creature, enchantment. So I need a land. How do I get a land in the graveyard? I don't think I can. Hmm. How do I set up for lethal next turn? Probably just play second flytrap. Actually, it might be better to empty. Instant sorcery, artifact creature, enchantment. Now, again, spell skills, you kind of want the enablers to be one mana, not two mana. Like, th sure, there's there's plenty of good two mana enablers, say its name, Grizzly Salvage, Cash Grab. But the issue is you have too many twos. Like, all of your payoffs are twos and all of your enablers are twos. You just have, like, too many draws that are just completely non-functional is the problem. Like, you need enough one drops. And that's kind of why I, I like Beastie and Seed of Hope. Okay, let's actually... There are 20... How do I do this? I kind of want to go here to try and find a torch. So let's go one, one. Let's go one, one. Discard fable. Counter there. It's a land, but not the land I wanted. It's there at 14. Cast this and hope that we don't die. Are there one mana cyclers that are two types? Not that I know of. I guess I didn't look a lot. I didn't look super deep into the, the one mana cyclers. But I don't think there's a, enough of them that are. I don't, I don't know that there's any of them that are two types. Yeah, you're thinking of, like, Architects of Will and stuff, but those are not binary legal. There are types, yeah, like Incubation Incongruity, Flotsam and Jetsam. There's, like, stuff like that maybe that you could play. Am I dead? I'm not dead? Oh, I just kind of assumed that I was. Uh, okay. So... How the hell do we get a, fit, a six type in the graveyard? There's got to be a way to do it, right? <laughs> Make a zero zero Hydra? If only you could do that. Unfortunately, there's this little line of text that says X can't be zero. They don't let us have fun. Footfall Crater. Cycling. Enchanted Land has tapped target creature gains hate, trample and haste until in a turn. Whoa. Trample and haste? Wait. That's actually kind of insane. Oh, I forgot about that card. Okay. That's actually kind of insane. I'm going to write that down. I totally forget that that was a magic card. 
All right, so footfall. That's a that's a huge suggestion, and incubation. Yeah, the Tameshi decks used to play that card as the way to give like cultivator haste. I think that is a really good suggestion. Well, even if we break out FOMO, we don't have the six type in hand, right? So we'd have to break out and hit like FOMO, discard this, hit the land, then FOMO, discard the land. I guess that would work, right? Oh, wait. This is just lethal, right? Because <laughs> I don't I don't need the, the other type if I'm doing this, right? Because I can just untap my dude. Yeah, okay. That works. <laughs> right, I could just kill them with the FOMO. Duh. All right, counters here. Untap. Cool. Lit. I do really like that footfall footfall creator suggestion. That is that is a really good suggestion. Incubation incongruity. What's the what? So what is that again? What's the one minute half of that? I forget. It's like look at the top five, right? Card incubation. Uh, one. So it's one mana. Look at the top five. Reveal a creature. Put it into your hand. Rest in the bottom. So it's like a it's like a slightly powered down breakout. This hand's good. I don't hate it. I don't hate it. I could see that being okay. Although, what's our creature count like? Pretty low, right? I mean, it's it's the same numbers for breakout, right? Although it looks at one less card. 20? 20 seems kind of low for that, doesn't it? I do really like Footfall Crater, though. Like being able to give being able to give Phobo haste and being able to give flytrap trample, that is a huge suggestion. And then you can just graveyard it for one mana. Like that's massive. I think that's a huge find. Yeah, I guess you could cut C to Pope for it. Because it's an instant and a sorcery. That's a good idea. And that way you could actually get delirium with just two cards, right? Instant Sorcery Artifact Creature or Instant Sorcery Enchantment Creature. How do my Enigmatic opponents always draw their one night of bottom, by the way? <laughs> Every single time. They're, they only play one copy. How many craters do I have to order? I, I don't think you'd want to play more than two, right? You wouldn't want to play a ton of that card. What do you think the number is, Chad? I was thinking two. And then maybe we could just cut the battles for the football craters. Yeah, I think crater is a really good suggestion. Um, What am I doing this turn? They're at 15. I have Artifact Creature right now. Uh, Torch is probably going to get cast this turn for instant. What if I discard Land FOMO and just go Torch, Wildfire, hit for six? Yeah, Flytrap having haste is good too. I think I'm going to do that. Discard Land FOMO so I can get Delirium. Does that change things? Um, now I could just go fly trap, make the shaman token a four, four attack before blocks torch the night hit for four. They go to 11 play land pass. That doesn't sound terrible. And I'm going to have five types, right? Artifact creature and ship and land instant. So I just need to find a sorcery next turn. I like that. Let's do that. So we go two here. Go to combat, hit for four, kill this, just so they can't jump block. Play layer, they go to 11. Then we can inti to give something trample next turn. So do you guys think that incubation is better than Seed of Hope? 
see, the thing is, like, okay, think about it this way. If Seed of Hope mills two types, like, say it mills two types that, besides besides instant, say it mills, like, if Seed of Hope mills either, like, one of the two type cards, like, either um, Patchwork Beastie, Wildfire, or FOMO, then Seed of Hope effectively gives you three types, but Incubation only gives you two, but it digs you deeper to find your other payoffs, so it's, like, maybe that's the trade-off and that's worth it. I don't think it's strictly better than Seed of Hope, but I think it is... It's different, right? All the Planeswalkers kind of suck. Yeah, that is true. It is It is better at finding Flytrap, for sure. We're at 11... What does this do? Enchantment creature you control, death dungeon life and hex proof. Target non aura enchantment you control becomes a creature. Okay, so they can make this a 4 4 death touch lifelink hex proof. Kind of want to do this. Go. Here. Counter here so they can't double block. Yeah. I might still be able to kill them through this. If they like play this on defense. Maybe. Getting a 3 3 off this. And there it's 6. Can also make a copy of this. Red and Realm Blaker. How many cards does Ren mill? I forget. Card, Ren, and Realm Breaker. So it's three mana, four loyalty. Land you get on tap, add one mana, plus one, untap a land, minus two, mill three. It's not the worst. Oh, not, not the worst. Maybe, does it say among? That could be, eh. maybe that's a good sideboard card for rest in peace. Because it's just a way to make a bunch of 3-3s. Three I don't hate that. Okay, surely I can kill them with this, right? Especially because I can copy this. Alright, cast fly trap. Okay, I gotta think about how we're killing them through a 4-4 four -four lifelink. So... I would like to go... 1-1, one, one, I think. I want to make everything at least 4 power. So now I can go 1-1. One, one, and then on attacks, I can make this a 4. Right? And I think that's lethal through the blocker. Because they only have 2 blockers... They block two fours. They go up to 10 and they take 12. I think this works. I guess the 6-5 trample changes the math, right? But it's the same thing. All right. Torch out. Haywire might in. I don't... I haven't been doing anything else against Enigmatic... Uh, melee bad, volley bad, hearse bad. Yeah, this is fine. Keep. Sounds good. Does anybody know when deck lists are due 100%? I, I, I think it's Friday. I, well, I know it's Friday. I just don't know what time Friday. So I was right. Okay, yeah, 6 p.m. Friday. Yeah, that's the problem. <laughs> the big issue is having to play post-board games against Rest in Peace. 
I will say 90% of the games that I've been losing with this deck have been two post-board games against Rest in Peace. Like, the games where they don't draw their graveyard hate, it's, you know, it's it's not it's not as difficult. But it is, it is quite hard to beat Rest in Peace specifically. I have nowhere to run. I wasn't going to go anywhere anyways. Life Tilt. Thank you for the two-month resub. Welcome back, Life Tilt. So we've been looking at uh, maybe not as much answers to Rest in Peace because we have four Haywire Mites, but I've been trying to explore cards that are good on their own, like ways to play through the Graveyard Hate rather than relying on being able to answer it. That's kind of the struggle, like the, the struggle that I've been having. So I have Artifact Creature, Instant Battle... Or Enchantment Battle. Do I want the second Fable? I don't think I have time for the second Fable. I think I want to go here. And then I might as well Seed of Hope first in case I spike six types. Which I did. Artifact, Creature, Battle, Enchantment, Sorcery. So I could take Besaju and still have six types. Which is nice. Let me go here. I mean, tapping out is kind of sus, but it's a little sus, right? I do get a 6-6, six, six, though. Maybe I'm not supposed to tap out this turn and hold up Besaju in case they have Enigmatic. Because they could have had Enigmatic last turn, but they had a tap land. <laughs> Ornery Tumbleweg over Flytrap. Well, I think you'd want it to be a Planeswalker, ideally. So then, like, post-board, you could just board in this threat that's good by itself. That was kind of the idea that I was thinking with Planeswalkers. I don't hate the idea of Ren and Realm Breaker, where, like, if they're mulliganing aggressively for their sideboard cards, you can just make, like, attack them for three every turn. And, like, that, that plus Wit, Wildfire, and stuff like that, like, maybe that's good enough. I'm not sure. It's It sounds like it may be okay. The other Planeswalker I was considering it was uh, Zenigos the Reveler, but that one's maybe a little too loose. Oh, they're dead. <laughs> That's nice. It's nice that they're dead. Uh, I can just go Super Ham, right? Well, we made things it should. I don't know. All right. The question is, how big? <laughs> The question is, how big? <laughs> oh my god, dude, this deck gets out of control sometimes. They didn't even okay. How big was it going to be? So, uh, it would have been twelve counters. I would have put a counter with Inti, and then two more. It would have been fifteen, doubled the thirty. Right, it would have been thirty. So it would have been a thirty-two, thirty-two trample. <laughs> Like, basically, I want something that is functioning. Like, I want a card that has text when my opponent draws Rust in Peace. That is what I'm looking for. Because a lot of this deck does not have text when your opponent has Rust in Peace. Chariot. Hazard, I think Hazard might be better than Chariot. I think Brennan said he, he had two Hazards in his sideboard. I'm going to write some of these down. I, I do like make loss. I know we had, we discussed make loss on uh, on Saturday. All right, keep this. Put back second fly trap because I want to be able to discard FOMO to FOMO. That's two types. Onsrog. I'm trying to go. Okay, two types. This is type number three. So we just need to find a way to get a fourth type. It's like Artifact or something. Chandra from Kaladesh. You would lose Gigantha, but I don't know how much that, how relevant that is. Honestly, Chariot doesn't sound that bad. I'm going to write Chariot down. as like a post-board threat. Do you think Chariot is better or worse than Hazred? 
It's kind of close, right? No, Jose, but there's nothing I can really do to... <laughs> there's nothing I can do to, to prepare me for that. All right, hear me out. You're going to like this play. That is Delirium. <laughs> and the next turn, we can go Flytrap, make a four, and hit them for... I can hit them for 14 next turn, right? Wait, they're just dead. I have lethal next turn. <laughs> Jesus Christ. <clears throat> Assuming they don't hold blockers back, but we do have lethal. Villa, thank you very much for the 12 month resub. Welcome back, Villa. Oh, oh. Don't cast Fatal Push, you motherfucker. It's okay, they don't have a second push. <laughs> you son of a bitch. Oh, they're still dead. Oh, no way, they only have eight. Hmm. What if I break out into... There's nothing I can head off breakout, right, that kills them? Hmm. I gotta think about this. Does Flytrap do it? No, we only have four types. So it doesn't quite do it. I'll look at this after, Monkey Brain. So I can go Flytrap, two counters, hit for eight, put them to three. Yeah, that's not the worst idea, Tandy. Like, Flytrap, hit for four, and then just leave these two untapped. That might be the best idea. A 3-3 three, three and a 3-5. Uh, you mean a... Th would you? Okay, so would you rather have a 2-4 and a 4-5 or a 3-4 and a 3-5? Probably a 3-4 and a 3-5, right? Yeah, I think 3-4 or 3-5. It's less damage, but I think it gives us two better blockers, if that makes sense. So let's do it this way. It's there at eight. I mean, we, we can almost certainly still kill them next turn, right? If we don't die. They do have two spell, spells in hand, so. Because they did not play a land last turn. I don't like that. Uh, well, we probably can't win if they have the plus three spell anyways, right? And if we leave this unblocked and they have Rage, it's only 7. So, we lose to Titan Strength, but I think we can't beat Titan Strength anyways. Hold. Oh, I guess we could have not died to that, right? Hmm. Didn't think about that. I was too focused on Titan Strength and not fling. Okay, okay, okay. Uh, melee in, battle out, done. Flytrap off Breakout was lethal, by the way. Uh, no, Breakout, if you hit a 3-drop off Breakout, it does not put it into play. It puts it in your hand. So you have to put a 2 or less to be able to put it into play. I guess if we... Was it lethal if we Breakouted into FOMO? I think it would have been close, right? Plus 3 spell would have had 4 damage. No, so... If it's Monstrous Rage specifically, it wouldn't have added 4 damage because they already had a roll on the Swift Spear. So it had to be Titan Strength. Oh, alright. We'll do the deck tech after this match. Alright, game 2. Game 2. Do not fear. Do not fear. Everything is fine. We run the play. Hand is phenomenal. Phenomenal. There's only 8 with haste. Oh, right, they were at 11. Yeah, okay. So I guess even a FOMO wouldn't have been lethal. What do you think about Blue White, Shocklands, and Phoenix for Wear Tear against High Noon? Uh, is that better or worse than Green for Pick Your Poison? I think Pick Your Poison's more versatile than Wear Tear. And it's only one mana. I mean, I guess Wear Tear is also one mana, but I think I'd rather play Pick Your Poison if you wanted to do that. 
which I don't hate the idea of. I think if you're playing Phoenix with, like, splashing green for pick your poison is reasonable. <clears throat> oh, yeah, Wildfire would have been 10, right? <laughs> It's fine. Reading the card explains the card. They just never attack there. There's this, they just, they simply never, ever attack there. They can't do it. They don't have it in them to attack. <laughs> Any thoughts on simply building Grease Fang as Orzov? Now that we have a split skin doll as a discard outlet. I mean, I guess like split skin doll plus Overlord of the Bailmerk. The biggest problem with cutting green is Chariot is so good when your opponent has Graveyard Hate. So, I think you probably don't want to do that. All right, we have Enchantment Land Instant. Or, sorry, Enchantment Creature Instant. So, I can try to spike off Seed of Hope, but I think it's probably... This is tough, right? Because if, if I do spike off Seed of Hope, I can hit them for seven, which is a two-turn clock. Or I could just cast Flytrap and then hope to spike next turn. I kind of want to go for the Seed of Hope line. Enchantment Creature Instant, we would need to hit a land, a sorcery, or an artifact. Okay, let's go for it. We did hit. Uh, so we just don't take the land, right? Instant enchantment creature. Yeah, we just don't take the land. Play gorge. Hit for seven. And I... I mean, we could die next turn, but, like, I can't hold back, right? Like, if they if they have it, they have it. I gotta, I gotta put them on a two-turn clock here. <clears throat> That's a good sign. It's better that they're casting this than, like, a Titan Strength. Whoa, defense? I like defense. Defense is good for me. In day... Uh, three cards in hand, huh? I'm trying to think of what the best way to play around Fatal Push is. It might just be Flytrap counter on each. And then if they have nothing, it's still probably GG anyways. Like, I could go Inti, attack, counter here, trample, but it's still not lethal if they have nothing, because they just chump here, take six, go to one. So I think I like this line better. <laughs> Okay. This doesn't save their creature, though. It just trades, right? <laughs> okay. Yeah, we're, we're done. We're not dying through just a Kumano. All right, game three, folks. Game three. All of the marbles on the line. And you thought this wasn't a marble stream. And <laughs> It turns out the one damage they missed on turn one, probably not that relevant. I will say that. Uh, I mean, keep. I have a removal spell and two drops. I keep. They mold the five. Hold. Hold. Was four Rectos prowess this league? Was it? I don't remember. Chat, did we play against four Rakdos Prowess decks? I mean, if we can beat Rakdos Prowess four times, that's pretty fucking impressive. Right? Yeah, one Enigmatic for sure. I don't remember if there was anything else besides Prowess, though. Besides the Enigmatic, of course. Oh, yeah, the blue-black control deck, right? So it's like one blue-black, one Enigmatic, three Prowess. This is weird. They have two cards in hand. I think I'm doing this. 
Whoa, what if I just kept that in the graveyard? It's just instant delirium, right? I'm in. Now the question is, which two drop do we want to play? Because I think I need to play a two drop this turn. You know, I actually fucked up. If I was going to, I think I want to play the FOMO. And if I was going to play FOMO, I should have just picked up the Wildfire and discarded it. It just gave me a free card, right? Yeah, that was stupid. Like, I'm not trying to turn this into a racing situation, right? I don't think I want to play the Wildfire this turn. Oh, yeah, there was a Mono Red deck, too. So it was Mono Red, two Rakdos, right, for the three Prowess decks. Let's go FOMO, discard Inti, I think. Maybe it's better to discard Breakout. Well, you should discard a Breakout, I guess. And then what we can do next turn is hit them for 10 and hold up melee. I'm okay with that. I have two in hand. I think I am mostly okay with that. Oh, well. <laughs> I guess we can just kill all their shit. I mean, it's probably safe enough to cast the Wildfire, right? Hit them for four, hold up one removal spell. It's better to double spell because I'm using my mana more efficiently this way. And I could just go removal spell this turn, like removal spell end step, untap, two, two drop plus removal spell again. That is a good point. Yeah, that is a good point, Otter. One of them probably did throw away lethal. I think I'm going to do this. I think this is the one I want to kill the most. Break out. Nice. Discard the Seed of Hope. And then hit them for 10. Get a push. That's fine. Hit them for four. You have five types, so not quite enough for Flytrap. We're close, but... Not quite there for Flytrap. Gumano. What does opponent have that they didn't village to buff Hero last turn? Probably just a removal spell. That would make the most sense. I mean, they also could just not want to buff the hero into my open mana. Like, if they ex if they suspect I have a removal spell, they might just not want to commit their, their pump spell or something. So, like, I'm not going to cast the torch here, I don't think. I think I'm just going to do this. I think as long as I hold up Torch, everything is fine. Hit them for four. They go to four. Because the Flytrap wasn't lethal anyways. I could have put them to two, but... Is 12 creatures too few? Is 12 creatures too few for Breakout? I mean, I have... I will say, I have missed a couple of times off Breakout. Like it is there there is an element of variance to that card for sure. Okay, so they're gonna village here. I can just respond and do this, right? They can't have anything. Yeah, it doesn't do it. <laughs> okay. Nice. Oh sevens. That's gonna be a trophy. That's going to be a trophy. Easy trophy. And we can fix the version too, you know? So that was impressive. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed the games. That is the Gruel Delirium deck. As of the time of recording, this is Thursday. It's about 9.30 a.m. I think I want to say I roughly have less than 36 hours before decklist are due. And I, I think I'm leaning towards this Gruel deck. Like I said, we've been testing it so much over the past couple of days. We've put so much work into it. Uh, this list that you see in front of you is actually not the list that was in the video, but I've made some iterations and changes since then. So I wanted to just kind of show you guys the changes that I've made to the deck over the past couple of days. Uh, Footfall Crater was a really cool find from chat. It's a one mana enchantment. You can cycle it for one mana. So if you're, you know, if you need an enchantment in the graveyard, you can do that for one mana. 
And it is a way to give a creature Trample and Haste, which is very, very powerful combined, as you saw in those games, with Flytrap. Fear of missing out with Haste can be pretty powerful. So Crater is like a, a nice nice way to do that while also fulfilling, you know, upping the enchantment count and giving you a little bit of cycling. We're trying out two copies of Traverse the Ulvenwald. The idea here was, we, you know, as you can see, we've gone from 22 to 20 lands, but we replaced those lands with Traverses, and then you'll see in a second Seder Wayfinder to kind of make sure we still hit our land drops. And what's really nice about Traverse is it's a sorcery, which you notice in those games we didn't have a ton of. There were four breakouts. I've, I've since cut a copy of Breakout because drawing the second can be kind of clunky. But as I've removed the Breakout, I wanted to add a sorcery back in. And Traverse kind of fills that role perfectly. Early on, it's a way you can help hit your land drops, which, you know, for one, it's a little bit slow, obviously. It's like an end of the battlefield tap land kind of. And... Um, you know, it helps you hit your land drops early, but when you cast it early, it's a sorcery. And again, that type is sorely missing a lot in a lot of the games. That's usually the sixth type that we can't find. So it's nice to have extra sorceries. And then later in the game, it's a pretty good top deck. You know, if you already have Delirium, you just go search a Flytrap or maybe a Fear of Missing Out, whatever you're missing. So a lot of, uh, a lot of cool utility there. And then the Seder Refinders, I'll be honest with you, I kind of hate this card, but, you know, it is... For what it is, it is very good at helping you fulfill Delirium. It's helping good. It's it's very good at helping set that up. Uh, it is a two mana one one in your aggro deck, which I get it. It looks bad and it is bad, but you just kind of need some more way to filter cards into the graveyard, and this is kind of the best way to do it because it's a body that you can find off breakout, and it's a way to hit your land drops. So you know, I I would like to play something else in this spot, but there's really nothing else that I that I think. That I like, I've tried all the mill enablers like cash grab, say it or uh, say its name, all that kind of stuff. But breakout specifically, finding wayfinder is why I like the wayfinders. Mana base again, we've cut two lands, we've cut the second forest and the fourth pathway, and then the sideboard is where it gets a little interesting. So, as I've said a couple of times, I really want to I wanted to find a card that was good in the post board games against rest in peace, and Urbrask's Forge is kind of exactly that, uh, where it's a standalone threat. They don't. The Rest in Peace decks maybe have less answers to Forge than they do for other permanent types. Like, they, it's a little harder for them to kill artifacts. Sure, they have March, but they, this doesn't die to Get Lost, Lockdown, all that stuff. So, it's like somewhat sort of a way to mitigate that. The Hazard staying in, we are two Volley, two Red Cap Melee. And then I'm trying a Miglaws. This could be the fourth copy of Haywire Might, but it's nice to have... Like, we essentially have four ways to blow up Rest in Peace on our board, but Miglaws is a creature that can just attack. It's a three-mana 4-4 four, four that can get bigger, can get Vigilance and Menace. Vigilance specifically very important against Wandering Emperor, so keep that in mind if you're interested in playing this deck. Um, but yeah, I just wanted it, I wanted an extra way to kill Rest in Peace, and this is kind of a way to do that while also getting an extra threat into the mix, which is, you know, still a threat that is good when they have a Rest in Peace in play. But yeah, that's pretty much it. Again, I'm, I'm going to play this deck a little bit more on stream today, and unless something goes horribly wrong, I think I'm going to lock this one in for the regional championship. I really do believe in this deck, and, uh, you know, well, maybe I could put my money where my mouth is. I'm probably going to get my ass kicked this weekend, but I'm going to have a good time doing it. Anyways, if you enjoyed this content, be sure to like, subscribe, let me know what you thought down below, and I will see you all in the next one after DC.